What's up guys, I'm Puneet from Program Is and welcome back to this series on Python. In this video, we'll be learning about data types. More specifically, we will learn about textual data and numbers. We will also learn how to store these data so that we can use them later in the program. Let's get started. If you haven't watched the previous video from this series, I highly recommend you watch that first. Click on the info button if you would like to watch the previous lesson. On my screen, I have the program from the last video. I'll go ahead and run it first. As you can see, hello world is printed. This program is using the print function to print whatever is in between the parentheses. In this case, hello world is a string. A string is simply a sequence of characters, either one or many, and is always wrapped inside quotation marks. Now let me take this up a notch and print another string. This time, I'll use double quotes instead of single quotes. So I'll say print, oops, print Python 3 is awesome. And this time when I press run, then as you can see, both hello world and Python 3 is awesome are printed. Now you can use either single or double quotes for strings. They're basically the same. However, you cannot do something like this. So I'll change this to single quote. And when I press run, this time Python shows me an error. You cannot mix and match single and double quotes. So I'll change this back and make this double quote. When I press run, then you can see the same output as before. Another data type that's heavily used in Python is the numeric data. And there are two commonly used numeric data in Python, integers and floats. The difference between integer and float is that integer is a whole number and float is a decimal. We can use the print function to print integers and floats as well. Let me give you an example quickly. So I'll say, I'll remove this old code and I'll say print 5 and I'll also write print 34.5. When you run the code, the integer 5 and 34.5 and the floating point number 34.5 are printed. One thing to remember is that if you use a number with quotations, it's technically a string. So if I surround 5 by quotes, 5 here is a string and not a number. I'll go back and remove these quotation marks for now. Till now, we learned about strings and numeric data and how to print them. In the real world scenarios, we may need to store and use this data in our program and not just print them. Before moving to the next section of the video, I'd like to mention that the Programmist team has created an app that allows you to learn Python from your phone. The app contains bit-sized lessons that are easy to understand, a built-in interpreter so that you can run Python on your phone, quizzes, and many more features. The app is available on both iOS and Android. The links are in the video description below. In order to store data and use them later in our program, we use something called variables. Before explaining more about variables, let me give you an example. So I'll remove the old code and I'll say city equals Kathmandu. Here I've created the variable city and this variable stores a string data Kathmandu. To store the data in a variable, we are using the equals operator. Now, instead of printing the string directly, I'll print the city variable and see what we'll get. So I'll say print city and this time when I press run, then Kathmandu is printed to the screen again. This is because the city variable stores the string data Kathmandu. Now technically speaking, the city variable does not hold the Kathmandu string. When we write city equals Kathmandu, city is actually referring to the string Kathmandu. Now storing data and referring to the data may seem like similar concepts, but they are very different in Python. We will learn more about what referring actually means in detail in the future videos. For now, we will continue to say that city stores Kathmandu for simplicity. Now let me modify this program and instead of city, I'll print city inside quotation marks and see what we get. So I'll say city and this time when I press run, then instead of Kathmandu, the string city is printed. If I replace the quotes again and press run, then this time again Kathmandu is printed. We can also change the data of variable holds. After we print the city, let me change the city to New York and print it again. So I'll say city equals New York and I'll say print city. Now this time when I press run, then it prints both Kathmandu and New York. Let's try to understand what's happening here. On line one, when I say city equals Kathmandu, then city holds the string Kathmandu. On line two, when I say print city, 
then since the current value of city is Kathmandu, that's what gets printed. On line 4, I change the value that the variable city is holding to New York. On line 5, when I print city, then since the current value of city is New York, that's what got printed on the screen. As you can see, we can change the value of a variable, which is why they are called variables. I hope that makes sense. It is also possible to assign a value of one variable to another. Let me give you an example. So I'll remove this code and I'll add another variable called destination underscore city equals New York. Now let me try something different. I'll say city equals destination underscore city. And when I print city, then you must have guessed by now, when I press run, then it prints New York, not Kathmandu. This is because the value of now city is now the value of destination city, which was New York. We can also assign numeric data to variables in a similar way we assign strings to variables. Let's take a look at it. So I'll remove this code and I'll say my favorite number equals five. Now let me print this quickly. So I'll say my favorite number. I'll print that. Now let me create another variable called pi and I'll say pi equals 3.14 and let me print pi. And now let me do the same thing I did before with strings. So I'll change my favorite number to pi and then I'll print my favorite number. Now this time when I press run, then I get 5, 3.14 and 3.14 again. This is because on line 2, the value of 5, my favorite number was 5. On line 5, the value of pi was 3.14 and on line 8, when I print my favorite number, its value has been changed to the value of pi, which is 3.14. If we need to print more than one variable and data in a single print statement, we can separate them by commas. Let's take an example. So I can say print city and I can put a comma here and I can say Kathmandu. Here we are printing two strings city and Kathmandu in a single statement. One thing to notice here is that when we print objects separated by commas, Python adds a space in between them by default. So when I press run, then as you can see it prints city and Kathmandu, but you can also see that there's a space in between which was not there here and here. We can also print variables and strings in a single statement. I'll show you an example. So I'll say city equals Kathmandu and I can say something like print city and instead of string Kathmandu, I can do the variable city. When I press run, then I get the same output as before because the value of the variable city, which was Kathmandu is replaced in the print. Let's try one last example. So I'll add another variable called kfc underscore locations, the value of which is three. And then I can say print city, the variable city, and then kfc locations, comma kfc underscore locations. Here, the city string, the city variable, the kfc location string, and the kfc underscore locations variable are printed in one print statement. I'll press run and as you can see, all four are printed one by one and separated by space. That means the comma operator can be used to separate not just two, but any number of objects and Python will print them all. At this point, we have covered all the basics of variables. Before ending this video, let's talk about how to choose a good variable name. If you have noticed in our programs, we have used simple and descriptive variable names like city, kfc underscore locations, and destination underscore city. We can give variables like c instead of city. It works just fine. However, it is hard to understand what c means just by looking at the code. So I can replace city by c here and here as well, and I can run the program and I'll get the same output. But here you can see for yourself that it is very confusing to know what c really means. When we use good descriptive variable names, it becomes easier to understand the code. To make variable names descriptive, we may need to use names having more than one word. In that case, you can separate the variable name by an underscore like destination underscore city in our program. By the way, there are some rules you need to know while creating a variable. 
Rule number one, you cannot create a variable name with space in between like this. You also cannot start a variable name with a number. Rule number three, you cannot use certain words as a variable name. You cannot use else as a variable name because else is a keyword. These keywords have special meaning in Python and are part of the Python syntax. We will learn more about these keywords as we progress through the course. Before we end this video, here's a recap of what we learned. We learned about three most common data types in Python, strings, integers, and floats. A string is a textual data surrounded by quotes. Integers and floats are numeric data. Integers are whole numbers and floats are decimals. We also learned about variables. Variables allow us to store data so that we can use them later in the program. It's possible to change the value a variable can hold. And last but not the least, we learned to give good descriptive names to variables. That's it for this video. I hope you learned something. If you're just watching the video without writing any code, I highly encourage you to try the programs in this video on your own. The only way you can be a good programmer is by trying. By the way, you can find all the programs from this video on GitHub. I've provided the link in the description below. Feel free to copy the programs and edit them as you please. And if you have any questions and feedback, use the comment section below. Join me in this video series and let's explore the exciting world of programming together. In the next video, we will learn how to take data input from the user and how to print them. If you like this video, hit the like button now and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring that bell icon so that you don't miss the next video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Happy programming!